Hello, ladies and gentlemen. We have just witnessed an incredible two matches in the early window of match week six. Uh, starting off with the Manchester United Aston Villa game, it finished 1 0 to Aston Villa. Manchester United never looked like they really could get into the game. They were in it, but they never had a, any cl really clear chances. They were getting, not dominated, but they had the majority of the possession. They just really couldn't string anything together in the final third. And when you're playing a team that has the quality that Aston Villa have, the longer you let them stick around, the more opportunity that something's going to happen, like what happened on their goal scoring when they scored their goal. Uh, a ball whipped in and a, a very, very well-timed header in the, the corner. There was a debate whether or not Ollie Watkins was crowding De Gea, which would have, been a, would have been called offsides. It looked to be borderline. I think that, that decision depends on the referee and which referee you have. But this is definitely a very bad result for United. And going down 1-0 in around the 70th minute, um, they should have been able to come back and being awarded a penalty in the, in the dying seconds of the game. Um, a penalty that awarded that I personally don't think should have been a penalty. Uh, it's a situation where what do you want? Where do you want the defender to put his arms? It wasn't in a crazy, unnatural position, but it definitely wasn't tucked to his body. It was sort of in like that that middle gray area. But once that penalty was awarded, I think everyone watching was wondering who was going to take it, Bruno or Ronaldo. And looking, Bruno was the one that stepped up to it. Emmy Martinez was talking, trying to get inside his head, which eventually it seemed like he did. But Bruno steps up and skies the penalty over the bar, not even close, into, Ro into Rosette pretty much. But to do that when you have the best goal scorer of all time on the field is inexcusable. Ronaldo should be taking that penalty. Ronaldo, I don't see Ronaldo missing that penalty. I don't see Ronaldo not not hitting the target at least. Like Ronaldo is known for scoring these late winners, stepping up to these penalties in the dying seconds of games and smashing them in. And I think from now on, we're going to see Ronaldo taking penalties at Manchester United. Uh, this is just a game that they needed to get a three points out of. Eventually couldn't, but they had a chance to salvage one point, which in this Premier League season, with this going to be a super close race to the for the title, each point is going to matter. And this could be a game where you look back and you say, we needed that one point or we needed the th they really needed the three, but they couldn't get it. Being at being at home against Aston Villa, that's a must win game if you're Manchester United and you have these these title ambitions in this super competitive league. Um, that's pretty much it for that game. But moving on to the the Chelsea Manchester City game, uh, Thomas Tuchel did something pretty pretty surprising that no one really thought he was going to do. He played uh, Kovacic, Conte, and Jorginho all together, which he's never done before in his time of taking over Chelsea. And he played Werner and Lukaku up top together as a front two, which he has also never done since Lukaku joined Chelsea. And this ultimately led to Chelsea's downfall in this game as uh, the front two didn't have any support behind them. And it seems like Lukaku plays better as a one striker with two players behind him sort of feeding him the ball like a, like a mountain of Havertz or a, a Ziyech and a, a Havertz. But... Tuchel opted for the the three pretty much holding midfielders and it really worked against him while Pep played Rodri in the middle of the park, which seemed to help uh, as he didn't do in the Champions League final. But Pep's team played an incredible, incredible game. They, had, they dictated the possession, the tempo. They pretty much dictated everything there was about the game. The entire first half was pretty much played in Chelsea's, Chelsea's half of the field. They, Chelsea couldn't get out um there really was no positives for Chelsea in this game besides the fact that they kept it at one Mendy in goal had a great game uh made a bunch of big saves it could have been two it could have been three if it wasn't for Mendy but Gabriel Jesus is, ends up getting the goal in the second half uh, pretty much just turns onto it on his right and then hits it in the corner but uh Mendy sort of couldn't really see through all the bodies there but 
Chelsea, after that, did go on a little bit of a push. They had a couple minutes of good spell of play, but it wasn't anything crazy. And City ended up holding on for the three points. And this is, a, I think, a statement win for City after the Southampton nil-nil and sort of the drama between Pep and the fans. This is a pretty big win for them that shows that shows the rest of the Premier League that, that they're here and they're not going anywhere and that they're a great side. Even without a traditional number nine, they, they will put a lot of pressure on you and they will dictate the tempo of the game. But a lot of drama early this morning. It was incredible to watch both those games and I'm excited for the rest of the weekend. I'll see you guys later.